How's it going everyone? And in this video, we are going to be walking through how you can set up the Orange Pi Zero using the official Ubuntu image off of Orange Pi's website on a Mac. And I know a lot of tutorials are out there, but I feel like they're mostly using Windows, so I wanted to help people out there who are on Macs. So here we go. And before we get started, I do have a little micro USB cable, um, sorry, micro SD card, it's eight gigs. I also have a little USB-C adapter here so I can get a micro SD card reader, because uh, we'll need that. And then I'm also using a micro USB cable for power. This is attached to a wall outlet. And then I have an ethernet cable here, which is how we're gonna be talking to our little Orange Pi Zero on our network. So we'll jump into it. Now, um, on the Orange Pi website, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on download, and it's gonna take us to this page. I'm going to click on the Ubuntu image, and it's gonna take us to this Google Drive folder. And in our case, this is the LTS model, but just double check you're using the right model. I'm going to double click that. We're going to go with the Bionic version because that's using Debian 9, um, which is newer than the Xenial version. So just double click this and we're going to go through the motions of downloading this file. I have already downloaded this file, but I do want to show you what this looks like. So I'm going to open up a new finder window and I'm going to go to downloads and I'm going to um, delete this stuff that we have from earlier. But basically right after you download this thing, you're going to have this 382 megabyte size file. It'll vary, you know, as, as they version this thing, but you'll have this tar GZ file in your downloads folder. So the first thing we have to do on a Mac is just double click it. So you don't need to seven zip or something else. There's built in utilities that will extract your tar GZ file for you. So you just double click this guy and it's going to expand the file into your downloads folder. So that results in you having a directory now and inside of this directory, you will have this .img file, which is about 1.18 gigs in size. So um, that's what you need to do on your local Mac. The other thing we're gonna be doing is running Belena Etcher. This is open source software. Um, you guys can just download this from anywhere. Um, you just search for it on uh, Google, um, but you can just download this thing, Windows or Mac or Linux. It's very well supported and open source, so it's free. I'm just going to close out this, um, and what we're going to do is we're going to now run the Belena Etcher uh, app, and um, it's going to pull this thing up. It's going to ask us what file are we wanting to use as the image file. So we're going to flash from file. I'm going to go to that downloads folder we had. I'm going to click on that directory. I'm going to click on that IMG file. Click on open, and then um, now's the part where I'm going to take my micro SD card. I'm going to insert it into my little uh, adapter. Thing just like that. And I'm going to be inserting this into the USB-C port just like that. Um, and in my case, um, it's going to tell me that there are issues with the micro SD card that I've inserted. That's because I've already imaged it. So I need to basically start from scratch here. Um, so uh, I'm going to click on initialize. It's going to pull up disk utility. If disk utility isn't automatically coming up when you're doing this stuff, I'm going to close that out. You can just type in disk utility. It's another native Mac OS application. Um, it's going to load what we have, so we're just going to give this thing a moment. And we're going to pick on that uh, generic storage device that we have, and we're going to click on Erase. And uh, you don't need to name it, but you do need to change the format to MS-DOS, the, the FAT type, and then keep the scheme as master boot record, and then click on Erase. And we're going to let this thing go through its motions. Awesome, so now that that is formatted, I'm gonna click on done. And then what we're going to do is we're going to click on, uh, or we're gonna open up uh, Bolina Etcher again. And it's gonna, we're gonna now select a target. And it is seeing that eight gig micro SD card that we've just formatted. And we're gonna click on select. And we're gonna click on flash. And this part can take, you know, a minute or so, depending on the speed of your computer. So we're just gonna click that. It's gonna prompt us for a password. So I'm gonna put in the password. Um, and you do need to have admin permissions on your account to do this. And you do need to have a not empty password. So I'm just gonna type that in and we'll let this thing get started. So now that our Blaina Etcher has finished flashing, um, it's going to now look at our drive and say that it's this really weird thing it doesn't recognize. So we're just gonna click on eject. And after you do that, I'm going to disconnect the micro, or I'm sorry, the USB-C cable adapter from our computer. And we're now going to remove that little micro SD card we've just prepared. So it's now imaged for our Orange Pi Zero. I'm going to plug this guy in. I always mess up the uh, direction you should go with, but yeah, I'm just gonna plug that guy in just like that. And now um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our micro USB cable. It's got some power and I'm gonna be plugging this guy 
right into there so you'll see that light up cool so you got a little light now and then the other thing is that when this thing's booting up with that image you'll see that the green and orange lights on the ethernet port should be lighting up too and if it isn't you might want to re-image that and try again but um, this is what you should see now i'm going to take my ethernet jack that is connected to the router um, on my home network and i'm going to plug this guy in so that guy's plugged in and um, we're going to give this thing a moment to connect uh, and obtain an ip address and so while that's going um, this is where it's router dependent so like in my case i'm using a tp link router if you had something else you would have to uh, use that this is how i'm obtaining the ip address there's other ways of determining the IP address of your specific Orange Pi on your network, but in my case, this is what I'm doing. Um, so I'm gonna open up Chrome window, and I'm just going to uh, go to tplinkwifi.net, and I'm gonna enter in my password. And under wired clients, uh, you can see that our Orange Pi Zero LTS is now showing up inside of our a uh, little home router which is awesome so it's got its IP address and if you check on the lights again you should see that like that little orange lights blinking every so often um, so that's great so I'm gonna copy this guy and I'm going to uh, now open up a terminal window in my Mac I'm gonna make this bigger so we can all see it um, and then also when you are imaging these things the built-in image will have a built-in admin account or a root account um, and so in our case I go back to Firefox. I'm just going to look up the Ubuntu Orange Pi credentials. And uh, the username and password for this stuff is root and then Orange Pi. Um, so I'll, I'll type that in, but this is stuff that you know can change over time. So I'm just calling that out. But basically the reason why we care about that is that um, when you are SSHing, when you're using the SSH command um, inside of the terminal, you will need to tell it the username and password to establish that connection. So it's gonna be SSH and then username, which in our case is root at, and then we're gonna paste in the IP address for our Orange Pi Zero on our local network. And this Mac is also on the same local network, which is the only reason why this works. Um, but I'm gonna hit enter. And then it's telling me um, that, you know, this is gonna be kind of done this before. It's asking me um, that it's running into issues, uh, validating the host authenticity. Um, and so there's ways to get past this. Um, and uh, if you haven't done this before, you won't run into this issue, but I run into it because I've done this on this Mac before. Um, but basically there's a way to tell SSH to just ignore the host key um, validation. Um, alternatively, what you can do that I've done is I just CD to the users directory and admin, and I just go to the offending SSH directory. Um, and then if you do ls-a, you can just tell it to like remove dash r known hosts and the other folders. And then we ls again, um, you can see that those files are no longer present, or I'm sorry, those directories are no longer present at this location. So if I rerun my command to SSH with this username, um, it's gonna now prompt me and ask me, uh, am I sure I wanna continue? I'm just gonna hit yes. And I'm gonna type in that password this is the password specific to the Orange Pi's Ubuntu image, which in that case, the username was root, and then password was Orange Pi, all lowercase, no space. So I'm just gonna type that in. And just like that, we have now successfully connected to our little Orange Pi running the official Ubuntu image uh, through our Max terminal, all on our local networks. So this is pretty awesome. And now you can do some fun little things with this thing, like you know, ping google.com or, you know, start installing your own packages and software on this thing. Um, and then to stop the pinging, you just hit control C on the keyboard. Um, but that is it. And you now have a working imaged uh, and fully set up Orange Pi Zero with your Mac um, using all open source software. So none of this stuff costs anything. You can now start playing around like you've got your own little virtual AC2 instance, but it's all locally on your network, which I think is fun. So thank you all for watching. Let me know if you have any questions and be well.